everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bishop's RV in Coldwater, Michigan today with the Sir Mixlot uh, Double Loft. Uh, uh. Um, at least I think that's the technical name for the model number. This is the new 40 DLFT. Uh, Jayco's had a loft model uh, destination trailer, often called the park model bungalow for a while, but this is the first time they've added an extra loft, giving you an additional bed and like separate sleeping space up there. Previously, uh, you didn't see a lot of that out there from anybody, but kind of the Salem and Wildwood Lodge series. And I've got some videos of those. I might remember to leave a couple links in the description if you want to cross compare and see what else might be out there. Now they're all doing things uh, a little different for one another, a little same for one another. So what's Jayco bringing to the mix? They are eight and a half foot wide to give you maximum living space. They've got eight foot ceilings to really open stuff up in there. This has a front drop frame bedroom with those panoramic viewing windows. Now apologies, during this video here, we do have those paneled off for shipping purposes so that when this gets to your destination, we're offering you uh, the most protection on your new product when it gets there. And we'll peel them off when it arrives. Uh, but this is carpetless, uh, even in the uh, like the living room slide out, which is nice. Big windows because you have like roughly seven foot slide outs, you have room for really big windows. And um, it's got that that double loft system where you literally go up a stairway to heaven between the bedroom and bathroom. And uh, you you've got a uh, well, Creedence Clearwater said you got a bathroom on the right, but neither here nor they didn't actually say that. I, I know what the lyric actually is. But uh, you've got a single loft to the left when you go up the stairs, a double loft to the right, which is really friends, great. Or like guests um, or grandkids, for the, the most part, you just friends. leave this thing parked. You have all these different have separate sleeping spaces plus a height bed in the living room you have four separate individual sleeping spaces on this which is interesting because normally only mid bunks offer a configuration like that now if you're kind of familiar with their lineup this is basically the loft bed version of the 40 rlts over there so if you like what you see but you're like i don't need the loft stuff check out our video on the 40 rlts but in the meantime i've talked way too much already let's get inside there so first of all just kicking the thing right off this being a different kind of rv we begin with this 60 inch residential sliding patio door right here. Uh, you used to occasionally find these as an option on some more conventional travel trailers, but the popularity of that kind of waned over the years. What I like about it, with those, I, I love those vertical blinds and it, it just adds a giant chunk of glass over on the campsite of your RV, letting in just a whole bunch of light and uh, giving you some really good views of your site. Now, when we get in here, you see how just wide open this sucker feels. Uh, this has the farmhouse decor that we're looking at here. That is standard in these. There is This is the only member uh, of the Jayco Towable world, basically, that does not uh, maintain an alternative decor. These are farmhouse only in the bungalow series. Um, I kind of asked about that, and I was basically advised it was for some... Um, <clears throat> factory production simplicity reasons. Now they do something, this is my nerd preferred way of doing it. If you're gonna go carpetless in the slides, I love it when the, the slide flooring matches the main flooring. To me, it just looks bigger. And with these having roughly, I don't know, six and a half, seven foot tall slides, uh, it, uh, it, it really does open things up. I noticed too that they included storage above the sofa right there, something a lot of manufacturers have dropped off on in uh, recent years. Now you see these little swivel stands right here. You see them in Jayco's, but you rarely see them in anything else because I think Jayco has some kind of either patent or exclusivity or something like that. And basically other brands would have to uh, pay crazy money to get them. So you don't see them very often. Now they do put some storage over the sofa, but if you think about it, if you're looking forward onto your campsite over here, they do maximize the windows in that area. So it really makes sense to me. Now, um, this is also one of the only times where basically table and chairs is pretty much all they do in a bungalow. They don't do a lot of uh, like booth dinette kind of stuff. Something that they do very well though is put uh, power outlets for kitchen appliances. I think exactly where you want them in the areas that make the most sense. Like over here on your little coffee bar by the entry door, like you might walk in, set down your keys, you know, drop your mail, depending on where you get your mail delivered to. That could be the perfect place for them right there. Um, we're going to come back to the kitchen in just a second. First, I want to actually continue to spin you around like a record baby. And when you sit down at the theater seat, that uh, 4K Insignia Smart TV Jumbotron that we're looking at right there, uh, if you're nearsighted like me, you're still going to get a pretty good look at it. I might need to pop my contacts in to still read the closed captioning, but, uh, hey, you know, there you go. We got the toenail toaster down below, taking the heat out of the thing. And did you notice 
This one uh, gives us floor flush slides on both sides of the RV, which I think is very cool. Now, they do use floor vented heating in these. It does provide better heating for the, the total space in the RV. But they do try to put them, like, not in the middle of... Well, I mean, technically, yes, it's in the middle of the floor if you look at a north-south orientation. But they, uh, they try not to put them in high foot traffic zones, as it were. I would like it... <clears throat> If manufacturers would start realizing that bacon grease does splatter horizontally and they put some kind of side splash next to that stove in the kitchen, but underneath that giant residential sized microwave, if you notice, we've got a very residential looking insignia uh, stove setup going on right here. And that right there, you can cook more than a pigeon, ladies and gentlemen. So many RVs, I don't know. It's like squabs for dinner. I don't know what else you're going to cook in it. Maybe some sheet pan cookies and biscuits. Uh, pro tip for you. Uh, you can kind of Google this to get some more specifics. If you're tired of your uh, uh, oven and your RV cooking in an uneven fashion, get one of those like um, stone baking trays uh, or sheets or whatever, and you actually put it basically in the bottom of the uh, the thing, and it will cause it all to heat far more evenly. Awesome little uh, cooking pro tip there for you. Bungalows, um, they kind of deviate a little bit from the rest of the J-Flight family by going with solid surface countertops, which is something I really do like. And we're going to pop those covers off in just a minute here. Take a look at uh, all the goodness. You may have noticed, too, as I was floating around, you've got that floating ottoman. You'll actually get to see that has some storage in it, too. What I like about that, it's cool that you got the theater recliners. But, like, if you got some friends over, this is a pivoting TV. You want to make the game day bucket go boom and, and kind of, you know, everybody hang out. You do have another place there you can kind of kick your feet up. Or, what I would have loved it for, if my grandparents had something like this, that would have been my toy box. Just absolutely, without question, I would have loaded that sucker up. Now, you're probably going to need a, a two or three step stool to reach them. But they have maintained where all of their air conditioner vents are louvered and vented. What that means is they can turn and close. And while I don't think you want to be climbing up and down there every single day, what kind of made sense to me is like, if your normal hangout spot is right on this, uh, the, the height of bed over here, or if it's right over here on the theater seat, and you do or don't want the air blowing right on you, you can kind of control and customize that a little bit, which I think is very cool. Now, diving deeper into the details here, you see the second swivel stand. Those are wall-hugging recliners, so you don't have to wrestle the thing away from the wall. And uh, here in the entire living room, you get those nice blackout roller shades. They didn't put, take that cabinet all the way up to the ceiling above the rear sofa. It, you know, in a way, I think it could be cool because you can decorate it, but I don't know. I also kind of wonder sometimes if the extra storage wouldn't be nice, but Lord, that is tall up there. So maybe it is the right call. You tell, leave me a comment. Do you like how they left it open above the rear cabinet or should they close that off? You guys chime in, you tell me. Again, it's a 4K Insignia smart TV that can pivot around. This is all pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry, by the way, which means it does have a, uh, like a sticker wrap on it. But it also does have, um, you know, real wood core that screws are going into. It does have a small MDF fascia just to kind of give you the whole enchilada on that thing. Um, it is kind of funny. There's actually a power outlet directly above the stovetop burners, which I don't think is ideal. But because they put a big window to the left of that, I'm not sure they had a lot of other space to put an outlet in that area. Uh, what would you think of like a pop-up power tower there to the left of the stove in front of the window in the kitchen? That's another thing. If you could leave me a comment, I'll, I'll relay that back to Jayco here. Um, the uh, I, I do like how there's that like flip up door above the refrigerator. Did you notice how that had a little gas strut on it? Not gas strut, but a little well hydraulic pneumatic whatever strut, uh, so that it doesn't just fall on you. And that, by the way, is an 18 cubic foot residential refrigerator and freezer. Now, a couple cool things. First of all, this is the kind of RV really intended just to sort of you know set it and forget it. You don't tend to tow it around a lot. So the uh, you know the extra large fridge is going to be uh, a welcome thing here. It doesn't have any sort of specific, um, you know, inverter function on this one like a lot of other RVs will. Because, again, it's not really expected to be rolling down the road and running. Um, by the way, I kind of looked at that and I think that when you're in the kitchen, the refrigerator opens the correct way. Uh, where it opens from the left side swinging out to the right. But doing this video, it almost felt backwards to me. In case you're ever curious... Almost every single RV refrigerator, you see where those brackets are up on the top of that thing, has reversible hinging. So very few of them are ever fixed to only open left to right or right to left. You know, you can you can open these things uh, a couple different ways. 
Um, if you appreciate all the extra little details like that, by the way, hit that subscribe button. You know, let me know we're doing a good job. Leave me a comment or, hey, hashtag nerd herd reporting in here, whatever. Now up here, you have the Nerf Bell Loft. That thing right there, when I was a kid, that is exactly where I would be hiding with my little Nerf guns and pew, pew, shooting down at people. And then the Nerf dart would bounce and end up in the chili bowl. My grandma would yell at me or something like that. Um, now, my grandma's from a generation that would have said, go pick your switch. Does, does anybody know what pick your switch means? I'd be, uh, be kind of curious. I, I'm sure there's going to be a, a couple people that don't have a clue what we're talking about. Now, we're going to come back up to the Nerf Battle Loft in just a minute. First of all, we are going to crack the door open here and slide into the bathroom area, if I do recall correctly. Yep, we got a, a light switch over here on the left. First of all, looking at the, ooh, I'm punching the camera, I'm so sorry. Looking at the space around the toilet right there, uh, you can see that that is extremely fluffy, friendly. They do an awesome, awesome job of that. Now, right over next to that, you see this giant cabinet. Well, looking inside of that thing, whether you just need a ton of extra hanging storage, which is great because the closet hanging storage in the bedroom in this can be limiting. Um, and if you have a bunch of people sleeping here, you may appreciate that. Uh, or that could be combo or stackable washer dryer in there, which is cool. Now, some people look at these things when you have a loft above the bathroom and ask, well, how, huh, how does the, um, how, how do you uh, get rid of the fumigation? Well, if you notice, you've got that kind of like a uh, hole in the ceiling here. That's actually, in a sense, <laughs> it's a fart chimney, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> didn't expect to say that today but essentially that's exactly what this is now with the loft over here uh it is a little bit shorter in the well not a little bit it's a chunk shorter in the ceiling clearance area versus what you'd often find in a lot of destination trailers um you notice how they basically they put what looks like a skylight in there they're actually just kind of cheating and giving you a few extra inches of headroom where you really need it because i'm a little over six foot and without that i wouldn't be able to normally stand up in that shower but uh, elbow room, fluffy friendliness, not a problem in that shower. And if Uncle Gary needs to sit down to shave his shins while he's bathing, well, he's got the perfect place to do her right there. Now, um, one quick note, it does have a heat vent in the floor of the bathroom. Normally, I'm like, mm, nope, don't like that. But they, again, really work to put that in a very out-of-the-way area where I don't foresee it being too much of a problem. Now, I'm on very limited battery power. My battery's kind of dying on me, so that's why I'm kind of clickety-clacking the lights as we go. Now, downstairs is the uh, primary bedroom. The fun stuff all happens up here, uh, up what I like to call the stairway to heaven, and you can practically hear all uh, Jimmy Page working on this, although a lot of controversy uh, you know, with uh, Led Zeppelin and Stairway to Heaven uh, allegedly kind of ripping that song off from a band that they used to tour with. And if you listen to the music side by side, it is uh, rather questionable. But you probably didn't tune into an RV video to hear, you know, rock and roll drama or anything like that. This is the new part right here. Jayco has had loft bungalow models in the past, but it was always a single loft with two beds. They've wrapped this over around and on top of the bathroom to add an additional loft space right here. And just to kind of help you see how everything comes together, our, uh, you know, giving you the view of the Nerf battle loft right there, there's also a chunk of storage off to the right. But um, overall, like, I found plenty of room to be able to lie down in this. This, I thought, was even for an adult, a great single sleeper. However, the, uh, the, the headroom left a little bit to be desired. That is where I think the second loft, the bigger double loft, comes in. The reason this one is bigger, and you'll see that I actually am able, uh, you know, when I'm done doing my planking routine, able to uh, to sit up and in, uh, in here far more easily due to the fact that because the bedroom underneath this double loft area is a drop frame, they had like an extra foot or 10 inches or something like that of headroom to put into this loft space. So, um, you know, if you got little kids, they may like that single loft. And there are privacy curtains for that single loft, by the way. If you have adults or teenagers or just big kids in general, they are going to want to hang out over here. Now, a couple interesting little details, like you've got that center um, kind of stand, you know, with the dresser drawer, individual dresser drawer. You saw me checking out in between the two beds right there. 
Uh, both sides of that, if you look really closely, have their own household outlets. So that could be a really cool, like, rainy day Nintendo Switch charging station or something like that. I know I would certainly hang out up here. Not to mention, uh, around the corner to the right here is where you had the, uh, the entertainment center for that, um... Uh, well, well, you know, the Loft Entertainment Center. That might be kind of the upstairs bedroom, as you were. Now, trying to go slowly so as to not make you motion sick when you wake up in the morning and the clock gets out of warning. You don't think you're going to make it on time. You might be saved by the bell, if you remember that song. But moving on, trying to, again, not make you super motion sick. One thing I do like is how they built the, the upstairs entertainment center out a little bit so that you it, you don't have to duck coming down here into the bedroom. Even at my height, I can just very easily step right down inside here. And I have an immediate question. First of all, let me just kind of give you a little scope out flyby of this to give you your bearings. But secondly, more importantly here, um, what do you think about having full front windows versus like front closet storage. Now, keep in mind, you're not really getting the full effect of the front windows because we do have some shipping covers on those protecting them right now. We're gonna see a better look at that outside. You probably already noticed, you know, wood paneling. No, that's that's not how the windows are intended to look, obviously, but you get the idea. Um, you know, would you prefer more closet space? Uh, like at least in the middle section, leave me a note. Let me know that. I do like how they include the uh, cross breeze windows there. Now down here, one of the things that you're seeing is this is a 60 by 80 true queen bed standard. But if you look at it, you see how there's extra room on the sides of it. They do offer a 70 by 80 king bed, or I suppose you could size the bed up, whatever works for you a little bit. Now downstairs here in the bedroom, because they have that extra drop frame space, it's a little taller than the bathroom, actually. This is about six and a half feet tall. Uh, so uh, basically, if you can fit in the shower, you're going to feel very comfortable here in the bedroom. And just to help paint the picture, take a look at those steps over there. Now, in case you're curious, there are a pair of um, air conditioning vents that duct down into this bedroom ceiling. Uh, they're just kind of in a little bit out of the way positions, but one on each side of the room. Uh, that way, you know, that way you're not burning up down here. Um, taking a look inside that, like that extra closet space right there is absolutely fantastic. But remember, if you don't wash or dryer equip this sucker, uh, you know, you'll have extra closet space in the bathroom as well. Now, I wanted to take a really good deep look under the bed in this one for a very good reason. Because this, uh, one of the hangups of destination trailers is they do not have good outside storage. It has that storage area that we saw under the bed is the only outside storage cavity in this RV. So you might want to kind of keep that factor in mind right there. Um, you know, depending on what you're doing, some places will allow you to have like a little shed or something like that for some outdoor stuff. But you're going to want to kind of figure all that out. And they did one thing here... I, I don't know that I truly love. I like that they put a window in the door. And by the way, you see that light switch? That is for like an outside patio light so you can see what's going on outside if you hear a bump in the night. This is a full viewing window right into your bedroom with no factory default privacy shade. Now, I understand that anything within the J-Flight family is being budget sensitive, but mm, that feels like a little bit of a miss. Like, I would, would you rather have the window like it is, no window, a, a frosted glass window would give you light without losing privacy. How would you like to see that handled right there? Now, technically road mode still certainly applies here with the slide close, but in the instance of a destination trailer or park model, again, as some people are uh, apt to call them, I almost call this kind of storage mode. Like when it's sitting at the seasonal site, what can you and what can you not get into? Uh, from the primary bedroom door, or if you're up in the bedroom area, obviously with the hallway over here on like the door side, the camp patio side of the RV, you can get to your bedroom, you can get to your loft, so you can like, if you get in late at night, you can get into your sleeping spaces real fast. And what is nice is, uh, whether you're just, you know, packing the RV up because it's been here for storage, you can always get in the bathroom real quick and easy, which I think is, uh, pretty darn cool. This one, however, like the, the 40 RLTS, the non-loft version of this floor plan, maintains good access to the refrigerator. This model, however, does not. 
So that is something you're going to have to kind of keep in mind. Now, I don't think slide closed access is nearly as important on a trailer like this as it is like a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, since this really isn't intended for a lot of towing. But regardless, I want to go the extra mile for you. And if you appreciate it, hit that subscribe button. Let's hop outside. And speaking of road mode, we do leave the factory window protection, though just that extra paneling that is uh, taped in place right there on uh, when these things arrive. And we peel it off basically when you're ready. Uh, once you know, you, you've made this one yours, until then we try to offer it extra maximum protection. Now, if you look at the, the sizes, and sitting right next to that fifth wheel is a perfect example. Uh, this is something that is the size of a fifth wheel. It's the weight of a fifth wheel, and it's not really uh, given the treatment a fifth wheel is given for towing purposes. It is not uh, outfitted with like an extra fancy suspension package or anything like that, because this is the kind of rig that tends to get there and sit there. It's not the kind of rig that tends to get pulled in, uh, around. Now, up front here, you're looking at that fiberglass nose, <coughs> pardon me, literally choking on thin air. Um, you do have the option of going with the full fiberglass skin sidewall, and I'd be kind of curious, you know, what would your preference be? Do you, do you like the plain aluminum walls, which cost less, or would you prefer some fiberglass skin, and it appears that somebody dislikes another person's driving? Um, that is normal. We're right up next to the corner of the property here. There's a stoplight on this corner that suddenly, with very little warning, goes from two lanes to one, and every day somebody cuts somebody off. It's rare we don't see some kind of fender bender here every day, neither here nor there, never mind. This thing, you don't normally see water heaters mounted up that high. The height of the water heater really has no function on it. There's nothing weird about that, but that is a tankless on-demand water heater so that, you know, if it is more than just a couple of you, if you've got a bunch of people in this RV all at the same time, you have one bathroom needing to take back-to-back -back showers. Well, it is nice that everybody can do that without needing to take a cold shower. Now, this is also, I think, the only time in the Jayco towable RV world where you won't run into Goodyear tires. Because again, this being something intended just to get there and sit there, there's no special suspension, there's no extra money poured into the tires. That's one of the major logic differences between something like this and a fifth wheel. Now, one of the cool things, we can deliver it for you. You don't even need a tow vehicle. We can help arrange delivery. Give our team a call. Let us know where you want it. We can make that happen. Now, it is a single sewer outlet, which is really nice. Your kitchen and your bathroom all come out in one spot. And on a seasonal park type site, that is really, really handy. Now, uh, over here, this one with the drop frame front bedroom, you see how that actually, that chassis has an extra I-beam that drops down? That is there, again, because the bedroom does, you, you have that step down into the bedroom area so that they have the extra headroom for the loft above. Now, you may have noticed how all the windows are tinted. I also do want to point out the fact that our stovetop vent hood does exhaust your hot cooking air outside. The one thing that I would caution you on that uh, if you have this at like a seasonal site and you're not there all the time and you got some food stored in it, Melvin the squirrel finds a way to climb into those things and get your peanut butter treats. Ask me how I know. Actually, that's a, uh, a story written to me from one of our customers that came up here to Southern Michigan from Georgia and uh, got a new camper from us that he was really happy with. And this was years ago, but he says, by the way, just in case you're curious, Melvin the squirrel can smell peanut butter snack cookies from, uh, you know, through an RV's walls, climb in through the stovetop vent and find his way in there to get them. So that's a, that's a thing that happens. Now, as you notice, by default, these destination bungalows do not have ladders on the back, but they are one of the only ones I've seen that is prepped for a ladder and does have a factory option to apply one. So that's cool. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit close quarters between here and this fifth wheel right now. My fat head can barely fit through this thing. What I want to talk about though, you got that 60 inch uh, like residential size patio door, but some people look at these things and they go, really? They cheaped out with those traditional folding steps. I think that's actually the right execution on a destination park trailer like this because a lot of people will build a deck next to one of these and it, and it becomes very much like not a structure that people tend to tow around. The one, uh, again, I try to give you the good with the bad. I try to give you those extra things to think about. I hope you appreciate that. With this one having that drop frame, you're going to need to have like a step down deck and 
Lord, that sun is bright. Ah, feels good though. So once again, if you don't need the extra sleeping, check out our video on the 40 RLTS. Uh, and if you do need the extra spaces, this could be something awesome at like a seasonal site or like a lake site where, you know, you, you can actually enjoy those front windows. But again, leave me some comments on that. Would you rather see some kind of additional maximized storage or do you like the front windows? I kind of, I'm one of those people, I'm very function over fashion, especially in the bedroom, I'd probably have the windows closed all the time, my two cents. I'd probably, if even though they don't offer this, I would prefer to have more storage in the bedroom, but I don't dislike the look of that either. I think it's kind of like a hood ornament on a car. Sometimes it just looks cool, you know. Uh, check the links in the video description. Let us know, and if you appreciate how we get out here to show you all these different things, hit that subscribe button and catch us on the next one. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.